God's grace and peace to you as we gather from wherever we are on this glorious Easter morning. My name is Jenny Arneson, and I serve as the lead pastor here at the Sun Prairie United Methodist Church. And I greet you this morning with an ancient Easter proclamation that we would say responsibly if we were here together in the sanctuary. Christ is risen. Christ has risen indeed. We need that Easter proclamation more than ever this year as we continue to journey through this continued coronavirus pandemic that we are going through. And the Easter proclamation reminds us that Christ is alive, that God is with us, and that nothing, nothing is going to stop the resurrection. I invite you to get ready for worship. It, we have lit the Christ candle here in the sanctuary. This was the last candle ushered out of the sanctuary on Good Friday and the first candle lit on Easter morning. So if you have a candle with you, I invite you to light that to remind you that this is worship and that God is with you, that Christ is alive on this glorious Easter morning. Also, if you have a Bible with you or a Bible app on your electronic device, you can have that ready, and you'll be ready to follow along with the scriptures. On this resurrection day, we'll also share in communion. And so if you have elements of bread or crackers and juice or water with you, you'll be ready near the end of the service when we share in the sacrament of communion. I want to let you know that this church extends a wide welcome to all of God's people. It's one of our greatest desires to make God's love known for all people. So we are glad you are with us on this Easter morning. We also invite you to record your attendance. There is an attendance button where you click into worship on our church website, and you can record your attendance there to let us know you are with us. And if you are visiting this morning, we are glad that you are here on Easter and hope that you too will register your attendance. Now, as we begin our Easter worship, we pour water into our baptismal font. And as the water is poured out, we are reminded that the covenant of baptism names us and claims us as God's very own. Symbolically, at baptism, we die to our old selves and we rise to new life with Christ. And that is a powerful symbol to think about on this resurrection day. May we remember our baptism and be thankful. And now on this Easter morning, in the name and spirit of Jesus, the risen Christ, we gather from wherever we are to celebrate with joy and praise on Easter. Let us worship together.
Good morning. My name is Austin Wink. And I'm Lisa Wink. Hear these words of invitation to worship. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us sing to God our new song of joy and new life. For we have been set on a new path and brought into renewed relationship with God and one another. All who encounter the risen one, whether gently stirred by the sunrise or surprised by the sudden burst of joy, will join the resurrection chorus one by one, some of us singing, some of us silently soaking it in. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Our first scripture reading comes from the book of Acts, verses 34 to 43. If you have your Bible with you, please follow along. The words will also be on the screen. Peter said, I really am learning that God doesn't show partiality to one group of people over another. Rather, in every nation, whoever worships God and does what is right and acceptable to God. This is the message of peace God has sent to the Israelites by proclaiming the good news through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism John preached. You know about Jesus of Nazareth, whom God anointed with the Holy Spirit and endowed with power. Jesus traveled around doing good and healing everyone oppressed by the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him up on the third day and allowed him to be seen, not by everyone, but by us. We are witnesses from whom God chose beforehand, who ate and drank with him after God raised him from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God anointed as judge of the living and of the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. A word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hi kids, it's Pastor Jenny on Easter morning to be with you for our time together. It's really dark this morning, isn't it? Do you ever get scared in the dark? Sometimes when it's dark, I get scared or, or sad or sometimes just a little bit of afra afraid of things I can't see. I was thinking that maybe that's what, what it must have been like after Jesus died. People were scared and they were sad and they were a little bit afraid. It probably felt like they were in the dark. The Bible tells us that on Easter morning, that day started out while it was still dark. And then, all of a sudden, when they realized that Easter had happened and Jesus had been resurrected, it must have felt like the lights came on and it was bright and it was colorful and they could see and they knew things and they knew Jesus was alive. Happy Easter! Well, this morning on Easter, I want to read you a story. And it's one of my new favorite books, and I found it in our children's library here at church. And the thing I like so much about it is that it has beautiful color pictures in it. And you'll be able to see the pictures on the screen when I start reading the story. But the other thing I really like about this book is that it's told by a donkey. Have you ever heard a donkey tell a story? Well, this story is told by a donkey, and on every page, on every beautiful picture, I want you to try to find the donkey, because the donkey is in every page on every picture. So as I start reading the story, you look for the donkey on the screen. But enjoy this story. Once, a long time ago, a little donkey was brought to Jesus. The little donkey had never been ridden before, but Jesus spoke gently to him, and soon he stopped being afraid. Jesus climbed onto the donkey's back, and they set out for Jerusalem. Early Sunday morning, that's today, Easter, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. But when they got there, they found that the stone had been rolled away and the body of Jesus was gone. The donkey saw two angels where the body of Jesus had been. He's not here, the angel said. He is alive again. Well, Mary and Mary Magdalene left the tomb. And the donkey followed until they came to a garden. A man was standing there. It was Jesus. The women were frightened. But Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Run and tell my friends to go to Galilee, and they will see me there. Jesus' friends were so happy to see him again. He stayed with them for 40 days, teaching them about the kingdom of God. 
But Jesus knew that it was near the time for him to leave this earth. One morning, he went up to his Father in heaven. The next day, one of Jesus' friends took the little donkey back to his home, and the donkey stayed there for the rest of his life, remembering the kind and good man he had carried on his back to Jerusalem. Wasn't that a wonderful Easter story? And what I like about that is that it reminds me that we can hear the Easter story in different ways. And the Easter story can be told in different ways. And that's okay to hear the details a little bit different. Or in this particular story, we heard it told by a donkey. And that's okay. But the point of the Easter story is that Jesus is alive. Jesus has been resurrected by God. And Jesus now lives in our hearts and Jesus has taught us about love and kindness and caring for people. And all of that still happens. And so we hold Jesus in our hearts and we live the way Jesus taught us to live. And that's what the Easter story teaches us. And that's what I want us to remember. Okay, let's say a little prayer together. And then we'll pray that special prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Easter. Thank you for the ways that you have taught us to love one another, to care for one another, all by the example we've learned from Jesus. Thank you that we can have this example to live in our lives. We thank you for Easter, and we thank you for this time we've had together, even though we're not together in person. We love you, and we ask that you would hear us as we pray together the prayer that's taught to us by Jesus, as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's been good to be with you this morning. Happy Easter! So much has changed since last Easter. The world has been shaken. Life has been disrupted. What we once called normal seems like it may never return. It's been easy to be discouraged, to lose hope, to feel the foundations of our faith begin to crumble. It's hard to keep our feet planted when the ground beneath feels like shifting sand. Now more than ever, we need to stand on the truth of Easter, a day which changed our eternity, changed our world forever. Death was defeated by life. Sin was consumed by mercy. The grave was swallowed up by victory. See, even in the darkest of moments, the love of Jesus could not be stopped. His faithfulness could not be broken. And when the dust settled, Jesus, he stood alive and victorious. Today, may we remember the truth of Easter, the power of the resurrection, and the promise of eternity. Yes, the world has been shaken, but the grave, it's still empty. And Jesus, he's still risen. John 20, verses 1 through 18. Early in the morning of the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. She ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple left to go to the tomb. They were running together, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and was the first to arrive at the tomb. Bending down to take a look, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he didn't go in. 
Following him, Simon Peter entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there. He also saw the face cloth that had been on Jesus' head. It wasn't with the other clothes, but was folded up in its own place. Then the other disciple, the one who arrived at the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They didn't yet understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying. Mary stood outside near the tomb crying. As she cried, she bent down to look into the tomb. She saw two angels dressed in white, seated where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and one at the foot. The angels asked her, Woman, why are you crying? She replied, They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've put him. As soon as she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Don't hold on to me, for I haven't yet gone up to my father. Go to my brothers and sisters and tell them, I'm going up to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene left and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Then she told them what he said to her. A word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this resurrection day, we pray that as we hear the proclaiming of your love from the story of Easter, we will be able to relate to the new life you have given us through Jesus the risen Christ. May we receive what is needed to hold us steady in your presence and to carry your hope and your joy and your compassion and your love out with us into a waiting and needy world, knowing that you go with us as our rock, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. When I come across a statement or a quote that I like, I usually clip it out or I write it down so I can use it later, either read it again later or maybe use it in a sermon or a devotion. And a statement that I jotted down from the Christian Century magazine back in 2006 was written in an article by John Buchanan, who was the editor of the magazine at the time. And the statement said, the challenge is we live in a Good Friday world. The challenge is we live in a Good Friday world. That's a statement that stands true in the world in which we live now, in the world of generations past, and in the world of the future not yet experienced. The challenge is we live in a Good Friday world. A Good Friday world holds betrayal, injustice, struggle, suffering, death, grief, and a lot of darkness. We don't need to look beyond the daily news to confirm the truth of this statement. Every day we are subject to heart-wrenching news. Heart-wrenching news that tells us that there's more darkness, that there's darkness in this world, and that darkness sometimes can feel overwhelming. Certainly, the last 13 months of this ongoing coronavirus pandemic has been dominated by fear and anxiety, disruption and disease, economic uncertainty, and loss. Still, and this is the great Easter transition word. This is a great Easter transition word. Still. Still. We are Easter people. We are Easter people. We are people who are challenged by living in a Good Friday world, but we build our lives. We build our lives on the hope of the resurrection. Still. We are Easter people. When darkness comes in all its forms, we hurt, we grieve, we struggle, we get weary, but still, still we trust in new life. We trust that new life is stirred up in this place. And that's why we need Easter every year. Whether we gather to celebrate in our traditional and beloved ways or not. And one of the Easter questions that has surfaced over the last 13 months really is a question that is no different from a question that could be asked every Easter. What kind of new life can come out of darkness? 
What kind of new life can come out of darkness? Long before the onset of this pandemic, author Barbara Brown Taylor wrote a book about darkness. And I know many of you have read it. It's titled, Learning to Walk in the Dark. I've picked up her book again several times over the last year. And I read little bits and piece of it, pieces of it, and I discover that what she talks about in the darkness still holds true today. It holds true in the life in which we are challenged with now. She writes that darkness is shorthand for anything that scares me, that I don't want any part of, either because I'm not sure that I have the resources to survive it, or because I do not want to find out. She continues by writing, Instead, I have learned things in the dark that I could never have learned in the light. Things that have saved my life over and over again. So that there really is only one logical conclusion. I need darkness as much as I need light. New life starts in the dark. And that's where we find ourselves in the Easter story today, as recorded in the Gospel of John. Easter happens, or begins, the writer of John's Gospel says, while it is still dark. While it is still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb of Jesus. For her, the deep darkness of grief came with the death of Jesus. As she made her way to the tomb, she was going to the place where her hopes had ceased, her dreams had died, and her worst fears had been realized. She comes to the tomb early that morning expecting to see a corpse, a dead body, which she is going to anoint for burial in the tomb. She comes to the tomb that early morning carrying the sadness, the grief, and the shattered dreams of so many, even the followers of Jesus, even the disciples of Jesus who abandoned him and deserted him after his arrest. Mary and the others had actually begun to believe Jesus when he said that love is stronger than hate, that forgiveness is stronger than revenge. They had begun to trust Jesus when he said that the greatest good is love for God and love for neighbor. And the way to new life is to love each other, to show love for one another. They had begun to believe him. They had begun to trust him. So many had pinned all their hopes and dreams on Jesus and believed that he was going to be the one, the one to usher in the reign of God on earth, that he was the one who was going to bring in God's kingdom. And now he was dead, and their hopes and their dreams were shattered. They were gone, and the world felt like this blanket of darkness. The pandemic has felt like a blanket of darkness. COVID-19 has been, in many ways, a revealing of what was already there, a revealing of the lingering darkness that was the biases which we hold within ourselves, the inequities and the injustices of our world, of racism that's been embedded in our laws and systems, of the damage caused by political wrangling and gridlock, and of the unacceptable ways that we care for the most vulnerable among us when it comes to food insecurity or homelessness or physical or mental health care. In these pandemic days and even in non-pandemic days, many can relate to what it means to have your hopes and dreams shattered, to feel like there's a blanket of darkness over your life. Many know what it means to have their marriage fall apart or to be in an unhealthy relationship. Many know what it means to be caught in the grip of depression that causes you to feel so low that the anxiety of life is something that feels like it's spiraling out of control and simply daily tasks feel monumental. Many know what it means to lose a job or need to find a new job during these pandemic months. Many know what it means to have your child struggle to function in new educational settings. Many know what it means to wait for the medical report and then to be told that you have an illness or that a loved one is ill. Many know what it means to sit at the bedside 
of a dying loved one or because of pandemic protocols to not be able to be with a loved one who is dying. Many know what it means to grieve and at moments when you least expect it, to have that grief grab you all over again. And so we hear the Easter story again this year. And we realize that even though this story is told differently from gospel to gospel, it really is the same story. It's the same story. The story never changes. But the circumstances of our life change. And that's all part of Easter. That's when Easter happens. That's when Easter comes alive in the different circumstances of our lives. Easter makes no deep or meaningful sense apart from the reality of our lives. And in many ways, our reality always includes darkness. Yet it is because of this early morning darkness on which Easter begins that we are given choices. We're given choices. It's a choice to believe that love is stronger than death. It's a choice to believe that darkness will not overcome us. It's about choosing to believe the vows of our baptism that say we reject the evil powers of this world and accept the freedom and power God gives us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression and fear in whatever forms they come at us. It's about choosing to believe that death does not have the last word and that darkness Darkness will always give way to light because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, the risen Christ, the light of the world, who has overcome sin and death. Even as COVID-19 has cast this shadow of darkness on so much in our lives and has caused so many losses, we still need to see and we still need to create signs of life, signs of light, and new life. Perhaps one of the gifts of this pandemic is realizing where we can truly see Easter alive all around us. Easter is alive when we realize how much we have in common, how much we really can relate to, and how much we can do good together, even when we're separated from one another or even from a social distance. Easter is alive Every time we send a card, make a phone call, send an email or a text, or do a video chat just to stay in touch with loved ones. Easter is alive when the gifts of creativity have allowed us to share worship and ministries in new ways online, even sometimes while home in our pajamas. Easter is alive with our children and our youth as they check in for Sunday school or engage in vacation Bible school or share their highs and lows of the week in youth group. Easter is alive when relationships with mentors are formed and confirmation happens, even from a distance. Easter is alive when generosity and creativity feed people and fill the shelves of our local food pantries. Easter is alive every time we help a neighbor. Easter is alive when we partner with our neighborhood school to support the ways that they are caring for their children and families. Easter is alive with the joy of hunting for Easter eggs hidden in your own backyard. Easter is alive with every COVID vaccine shot that is given and received. While our sanctuary has been empty over the last 13 months, the church, the church is alive. The church is alive because of Easter. We need only look outside our front doors of the church to see the cross that many of you have decorated during Holy Week. Tucked within that cross are prayers and flowers, palm branches, trinkets, poetry. There's a face mask on the cross. All sorts of things that represent not only the challenge and the darkness, but represent Easter. That Easter is alive. I'm thinking we may keep that cross up during the 50 great days of the Easter season until we celebrate the birth of the church on Pentecost. Because of Easter, 
we can relate to new life following darkness. My prayer for our post-pandemic world is that we work together, that we work together to shape a new way of living and being based on the gospel, based on the new life that Easter offers, based on the reality that we are Easter people who know that even in the challenge of living in a Good Friday world, God is with us. God is with us. We are Easter people, and there is nothing, nothing we can do to stop the resurrection. May it be so for each of us. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. As we continue in worship, we are reminded that the hope and joy of Easter is something that needs to be shared. 
And one of the ways we share that hope and joy of Easter is through our giving, through our offerings. I invite you to make your offering in several different ways. You can either go to our church website where you clicked into worship and there is an offertory button there and you can make your donation that way and it gives you several online giving options. Or you can mail your offering to the church or if you're coming past the church, you can put it in our mailbox. And I want to thank you for the ongoing support of faithfulness that you have given us, especially over the last 13 months of this pandemic, to keep our ministry going, to make our ministry relevant as we reach out beyond ourselves and into our communities. Thank you. And each week we show you pictures of what our offerings are going to support, what is happening in our ministry. And today we have pictures from last Sunday's Palm Sunday Parade. It was great fun as we gathered in the church parking lot and decorated our cars and waved our palm branches and then we had a parade route that went through our neighborhood and we even went past the Lutheran church when they were having worship and they waved their palm branches back at us. So it was a wonderful day. So thank you for the ways that you're offering support, the ways that we can engage in ministry together. And now we do come to the time when we open ourselves to offering communion. So I invite us to prepare our hearts and minds to share in the sacrament of communion. It is a blessing and a gift to be able to share in the sacrament of communion on Easter. If you have family visiting with you today, it may have been a long time since you've shared communion together. In the gospel, we hear a story on the evening of Easter when the resurrected Christ was with his followers at a table. But they didn't recognize him until he broke the bread, blessed it, and gave it to him. And then they recognized him. So we recognize Christ in this communion this day as we share in the bread and the cup. So we, with all the company of saints, I invite us to share this communion with the risen Christ as we break the bread and drink the cup. I invite you to share communion out of your own need, your need to know the grace of God's love and the wideness of God's mercy. And in the United Methodist Church, we always remind you that we celebrate an open communion table, meaning that all are invited to take the bread and cup as a way of knowing that we are one with Christ, one with each other, and one in service to the world that God loves. Communion is also called Eucharist, which means thanksgiving. So I invite us to bow our hearts as we join together in prayer as I offer the prayer of great thanksgiving. Let us pray. God of resurrection glory, this is a day of gladness and joy as we celebrate your gift of love made known in Jesus, the risen Christ. So we lift up our hearts to you and give you thanks. You have brought life out of death and hope out of despair. Grant that we might live in newness of life and that we might ourselves know the power of resurrection. On this glorious day of Easter, we give you thanks for your steadfast love which endures forever, and we rejoice in this day that you have made. We thank you, loving God, that it is through the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus that we know you to be our Savior. Jesus healed and taught, ate with sinners, and made your love known for all people by water and the Spirit. Let our lives reflect Easter hope in the midst of tragedy, struggle, and suffering. Let our actions be filled with compassion in a world that is so often bruising with indifference. Let our words be truthful when misinformation is all around us. Let our forgiveness build new bridges of reconciliation. And let Easter joy linger in our hearts and fill us with hope and love. On this day, you raised Christ from the dead, and he was recognized by his followers in the breaking of the bread. Since then, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. By the gift of your spirit, and in the name of Jesus, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We are told in Scripture that on that night before Jesus gave himself up, he was with his followers, his disciples at the table. And at some point in the meal, he took bread from the table. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body, the bread of life given for you. Because there is one loaf. We, as many as we are and as diverse as we are, are one body in Christ. 
the bread which we break is a sharing in the new life that Christ gives. Scripture also reminds us that when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. And after giving thanks to God, he shared that with his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The cup of the new covenant, given for you. And I invite you to commune. You may either eat and drink from your bread and cup, or you might want to take a piece of your bread and touch it to the juice and commune in that way. The bread of life and the cup of blessing given for you. Take and eat and drink. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this resurrection day, you have fed us at this table with this holy mystery. Now grant that we'd go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others, to give ourselves as living witnesses in the world you love. We pray all of this in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. As a response to our worship, we invite you to put your faith into action, and we have several ways for you and your family to do that. We encourage you to go to our church website at sunprairieumc.org and see what is happening in the life of the Sun Prairie United Methodist Church and see where you might get connected and involved. If you don't already receive our weekly Thursday email that outlines what is happening in the church, or our Monday devotional word of the week, you may contact the church office and we will get you on those email lists. If you are a person graduating from high school or already in college and you are applying for one of our church's scholarships, a reminder that the scholarship application deadline is Wednesday, April 7th. More information about scholarships can be found on our church website. You will want to be in worship with us online next weekend for Holy Humor Weekend. One of the traditions of the Easter season is to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus with smiles and laughter. God raising Jesus from the dead was like a joke played on the world. We celebrate and laugh as God has overcome the power of sin and death. And finally, we will have our monthly food collection to support the Sun Prairie Food Pantry on Saturday, April 10th from 10 to noon in the church parking lot. Now that you have heard the good news of Easter hope and joy and the new life, that can follow darkness. Go and tell the world of God's great love for all people. Take with you the love of our Creator God, the redeeming grace of Christ, and the sustaining strength of the Holy Spirit's presence, which is with us in the midst of all things. And be thankful, people. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Jesus has risen. Jesus has risen indeed. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. He is risen! He is risen indeed! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Happy Easter everyone! God bless us all! Christ is risen! Christ has risen indeed! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Indeed, Christ is risen today! Hallelujah! Have, Have a blessed, blessed Easter. Easter.